Hello dear subscribers. Today we shall be talking about the word unrighteousness or unrighteous and how unrighteousness applies to the climate which we are in at the very moment. Unrighteousness or unrighteous as an adjective is defined as simply not righteous, sinf sinful or wicked. To be unrighteous is to suppress the truth, even the truth of the mark of the beast that it is here. Suppression of the truth may take various forms. A person, such as a leader in the church or a pastor, may suppress the truth, even the truth of the mark of the beast that it is here indeed right now, by simply choosing of not speaking about it whatsoever, willfully ignoring it. And then there are others who have went as far to mock people who are righteous, who are passionate about the truth, when we say righteous, imputed righteousness, of course, from the Lord Jesus Christ. And that such, even pastors, went far as to mock people who are warning about the mark of the beast by calling them a bunch of crazies. Such was a pastor at Rock Harbor Church by the name of Brendan Holthouse. Also, unrighteous may be defined as sinful or wicked. And here we read unjust, unmerited. Other words, synonyms included here are iniquitous, nefarious, sinful, unethical, unlawful, and that brings to mind excessive lawlessness or excessive lawlessness in our days, such as is described in Matthew chapter 24. Wicked and wrong. And obviously you have the opposites there, the antonyms. Ethical, honorable, honest, moral, righteous, upright. So, what do we read in Romans? Chapter 1. I'll keep this video relatively short. It won't be so long. So that you get the essence of what we're talking about. Romans chapter 1 verse 18 reads, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Have you ever wondered what it means to hold the truth in unrighteousness? I have finally understood it, and it means to suppress the truth, even the truth of the mark of the beast. And suppression of the truth is unrighteousness. Holding the truth in unrighteousness is suppression of the truth. Now, there are various forms in which this suppression, this unrighteousness, suppression of the truth is being um, manifested. We can see it principally through the suppression of social platforms various social platforms, even the social platform that we are on at the moment. And I wonder whether you have noticed that there are many videos that have surfaced on this, plat on this platform of YouTubers who are speaking about the ill effects of the injectable abomination. And they are do, right, doing rightly so. 
I have nothing against these people. They are doing their duty. They are bringing the truth to, to this platform and to other platforms. They are speaking about the abomination and how it is uh, causing serious ill effects. But I've noticed that their channels have not been struck down or they haven't been silenced. But when it comes to saying that the abomination is the mark of the beast, that is when literally hell breaks loose. I repeat, that is literally when hell breaks loose. And that only means one thing to me. That is the one thing that the adversary, Satan, doesn't want to get out. He doesn't want it, want it on any of the social platforms or social media because it is the truth. The abomination in the syringe is the mark of the beast. And we continue reading in Romans chapter 1, verse 21, that it says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. They became vain in their imaginations. They boasted and they believed that the abomination was going to save them. They called it a savior. Therefore, their foolish heart was darkened. How, may you ask? They were deceived. And definitely in receiving the abomination, the light of a candle shines no more at all in them, as we read in Revelation chapter 18, verse 23. And then there are also those leaders in the church who not only suppress the truth and unrighteousness, but where still they will go as far as to deceive their flock and tell them that they should take the abomination that is the mark of the beast. So unrighteous people suppress the truth, even the truth of the mark of the beast. And obviously, 2 Thessalonians 2 is a very famous chapter where it speaks of unrighteousness and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness so those even those who haven't received the abomination yet and they are mocking and scoffing at those who are warning not to take the mark of the beast, the abomination in the hypodermic needle and syringe, those are at a very great risk of being struck by a strong delusion and they are at a very big risk of believing the lie. And the consequences would be that they might be damned who believed not the truth, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness. And they reveal their pleasure by mocking and scoffing and making fun of those who are watchmen and are lovers of the truth and are warning people not to take the mark of the beast. Now, what do we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6? The consequences of taking pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, 
Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So as you can see that the unrighteous are listed first about not inheriting the kingdom of God. The unrighteous are those who suppress the truth. Now, on a more positive note, what does the Bible say about righteousness, about loving the truth, about the righteous? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, we read, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Don't you feel day after day that you are hungering and thirsting after righteousness? Don't you feel the, that the excessive lawlessness that has simply become rampant since the year 2020, that unrighteousness is rampant, it's everywhere, that murder is going unpunished, that genocide is going unpunished, people who should be arrested are still roaming out free and we're talking about people in high-ranking positions even those who are ruling certain nations such as the one of Babylon don't you hunger for and thirst after righteousness yes we do but at the moment, there is excessive lawlessness. And because of excessive lawlessness, the love of many shall grow cold, as we read in Matthew chapter 24. Let's read on. Verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Persecuted for righteousness' sake. Persecuted for wanting to bring the truth to light. The opposite of suppressing the truth is bringing the truth to light, bringing the truth to, to social platforms in the public domain. Persecuted, having their videos struck down, having their channels removed, being silenced from every platform. Hmm? Persecuted and some, some of them have even been sent to heaven, arrested or sent to heaven, okay, for speaking the truth. That's persecution, and that is happen happening on a rampant scale right now. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. All manner of evil. Okay. They uh, assassinate. They do a character assassination. They sling you with mud. All manner of mud slinging. All manner of fact checking and the lies that are placed at the very top of the algorithms. So they make sure that you see them before you get down to the truth, which is probably buried below a pile of lies. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so percuted they the prophets which were before you. And if you don't speak out, what good is it? Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savour, where will shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. 
a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And our final verse is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And remember this. If you rem don't remember anything from what I said, take this home with you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So in seeking first the kingdom of God and the love for the truth and by bringing the truth to light rather than suppressing it, you are seeking the kingdom of God and all your needs shall be added unto you. So take courage. You are to be the salt of the earth and the light in this dark world that is getting darker by the second. I hope this message blesses you. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you haven't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, please don't delay. For it is written in Romans chapter 10 verse 13. For whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God bless you all.